Diana moved me to just change my talk. I had, a, I had a mother, just like every single one of you in this room. And my mother's name was Beulah Browning Arnold. She was a beautiful, beautiful woman with long red hair as a child. And she had a great love for people. And she was a social activist, different than me. She was a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> she was a social activist. <laughs> And she loved summer camp, and she used to, as a child, go up to the fresh air camps from Brooklyn, where she lived, and work. She was born in 1922. And when I was 13, she found a little pea-sized lump in her breast. And she called my grandmother down in Brooklyn. We lived up in upstate New York, and she said, Mother, I found a lump in my breast and I'm going to die. And she did. And I was 15. And I thought, I loved my mother. I loved my mother. But I did not love her acceptance. I didn't love her acceptance for what is in this world that doesn't work. And I was determined that I was going to find a different way. And my life very much became about working for the healing of this world. I couldn't heal my mother, she was gone. But I was going to heal this world. Vicki told us about this world and what it looks a whole lot like. Diana in 2006, right? Maybe it's not one to six months, but it's like we're in deep trouble. But look at Diana. What did she do? She did something different. She said, the one percent the 1% is what I know, and the 99% is what I don't know. And that's where I'm going to live. So I went through many things. I was a hippie. I was into natural foods. I started at the natural foods restaurant. I started a magazine that was going to save the world. Got very burned out and finally went to a program and got a degree in something called Creative Arts and Learning. And I became passionate about the role that the arts can play in bringing people together across lines of difference, bringing generations together, bringing people from cultures together, bringing the joy of life into our hearts and into our very selves developing compassion. And from that, I met a man named Charlie Murphy. And together, we started two organizations for teenagers. I never thought I'd be working with teenagers until I started working with Charlie. Uh, but I did know I wanted to work with creative expression in people and communities. So we started Power of Hope right here at the Whitby Institute. We brought together youth from all different cultures and backgrounds with adults, adult leaders, healers, artists of all stripes, all people who believe that in spite of the evidence to the contrary, that life is fabulous, that there is a future, that we get to be here. The very fact that we're on the planet right now is a huge gift. And so people who could hold the fact that, yes, what Vicki told us is right, and what Diana told us is also right, 99% of what's going on, we don't even know. And kids need to be around adults who can hold those polarities. We're in deep doo-doo, and there's, who knows, there's a future. So we, we, we brought all these people together and created a one-week experience where we would together build a creative community. And 
People would express themselves through all kinds of art forms. From morning till night, we created a safe place where people dared to express themselves. And all I can say is it's as if all heaven broke loose. Remember one young boy saying at the end of the day, and some of these kids came from the most heartbreaking lives. And he said, Peggy, this was a very good day. <laughs> we took that work, we were so in love with this work and the people we got to work with and the kids and all the adults who would come flocking to these programs. Because it turns out that adults as well as kids are dying to get creative. And we started a partnership with Empowerment where we go all over the world and work with people. People all over the world say the same thing when they're in these creative communities. They say, for the first time in my life, I feel like myself. For the first time in my life, I know who I am. And from that, last year we started in Seattle for the greater Seattle area, Young Women Empowered, which is for women and girls. And boy, is that luscious. So instead of a week-long creative community, we have a year-long creative community that's now in the second year. So what I want to say about all this is we live in a world that has been tyrannized for hundreds of years by the prizing, the love of the left brain. Be organized. Be on time. Put it together in a nice linear fashion. It's all about science and math. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing. That's part of it. It's half of who we are. But it's been done at the expense, at the expense of the other half of who we are, which is our right brain, which is our creativity, our ability to see the whole, our ability to connect our ability to have empathy, relationship, love, creativity. It's what some people would call the feminine side of things. And as I started to pay attention to this, I just started hearing all kinds of, like how much that right-brained part of us is demonized. Like how many of you, for example, spend a huge amount of time saying either, I should get organized, or, spending your time trying to get organized, <laughs> right? That is that left brain tyranny. It's all about more money, a more, a more, a more, a more. A more love. So, um, we have to find a balance. And I believe that through finding this balance is the way that we can heal our world and surprise ourselves the same way as Diana has healed her body and surprised herself. How do we turn that right brain on? And here's a few things I would like to say. Oh, yes, our social commentators are now telling us it's time for the right brain. Thomas Friedman says, the most crucial capacity to have in a flat world is creative imagination. This is what we need to be teaching our children. Second is Daniel Pink. And uh, I, he wrote a book called The Whole New Mind. And when I told Diana uh, that I had this quote, she said, oh, that book killed me. Because it's all about activating the right brain and finding that balance so that we step into holy who we are. He says the future belongs to a very different kind of person with a different kind of mind. Creators and empathizers, pattern recognizers and meaning makers. These people, artists, inventors, designers, storytellers, caregivers, consolers, big picture thinkers. Do you know any of those people around here? <laughs> Will now reap society's richest rewards and share its greatest joys. Uh -oh. Now he says, those people will, will reap the rewards. I say, we need to do this. 
It's our job for our future generations to wholeheartedly support a move toward a rebalancing, bringing that right brain in. Couple things. First thing, to get your creativity going and get that right brain balance going is to recognize that every single person, you are creative. Creativity is not just about making art. Creativity is a force, it's an energy that flows through us, through us as humans. It's one of our greatest gifts. So if you're more a human, you are creative. <laughs> you just are. If you, if you um, make a beautiful breakfast, if you make a budget for an organization, that's very creative. <laughs> have to recognize that you are creative. I grew up thinking I wasn't, it, it, and it really got in my way. If you're a person, one of those many people who says, oh, no, I'm not creative, just like change it up right now, throw it out, and step in. You were born a human, I think everyone here was. You're creative. Second, we have a birthright to express ourselves through the arts without having to be good. It is our right as a human being, and it is our responsibility as a human being to express ourselves through the arts. Because it is through that that we create this rebalance. We become the whole person who we are. So if you are one of those people that say, well, I sing in the choir, but I mean, I sing in the shower. Go join the choir. I happen to know when you could join. <laughs> if you are somebody who writes secretly, bring it out. Bring it out. Rollo May, the great psychologist, said, creative expression is most often accompanied by a feeling of shimmering joy. We need that. And my guess from what I heard from Diana, a lot of shimmering joy got into those cells, right? The cells of our world need a lot of shimmering joy going through it right now. And what we find in our work around the world with the kids and what we call the social artists, the adults that come together to be with them, is they're all over shimmering joy. The kids who don't know where their lunch is coming from are into shimmering joy. The kids who are being beaten are into shimmering joy. Everybody's into shimmering joy. We know what that is, and we need it. So that's the second thing. We humans get to play in the arts. If you've just been dying to dance, just head back over to these guys. <laughs> or to joy, right? It's all around us in our community. And by letting yourself do it, letting yourself off the hook, I don't have to be good. You can join in. Third thing is to recognize that our creativity is something that we can build and develop. It's like love. The more you use your creativity, the more there is. So you can do, you can take creativity, as soon as you're in that creative realm, you've moved over into activating that right brain. The right brain is actually over here. You've activated the, the left part of yourself, your right brain, and you become a more whole, a more empathetic, a more full you. It can be as simple as walking to the store by a different direction. It upsets those brain patterns and activates the right brain. Or you can do what I do with my five-year-old grandson. You can play a game of sound balls. Suzanne, stand up. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my challenge to all of you, we live already in a creative community, but my challenge is that we take it from maybe 25, 30% just backtrack for a second. The studies now show that creative communities are thriving communities. So let's take Whidbey Island and let's just take it from 25% up to 90%. Which means let's sing 
in the fly while we're waiting for the movie to come out. <laughs> <laughs> meeting. There was some theater improv games in the town meetings. <laughs> New teachers in the audience bring the arts into your classroom the first day of school in the fall. You don't have to have anybody tell you it's okay. And you don't even need any resources. You just need to have a whole bunch of things you can pull out of your bag to bring into your practice with kids. And when you bring art into your work with young people, they come alive. They want to be there. They start to love themselves, and they start to love this world. So I invite you to all join me in being the Diana, the great Diana, right? The great Diana that we will each become those goddesses that are going to heal this world. Like this. Bella, mama, bella. 